Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. <laughs> uh, let me begin with just a few general comments and some thoughts uh, to piggyback on my comments after the game on Saturday. Um, our fans have every right to have high expectation of our program, and I can assure you that no one has higher expectation than I do. Uh, we have a proud history of history and tradition of football at FSU, and it, is in our, and it is on our shoulders to carry on the torch, and our fans, student, alumni, former player, deserve a team that plays better than what we have so far this season. Our program has some tremendous young men who are determined to get it fixed, and who are committed to, committed to turning this around, and a group of coaches who are looking at everything, including ourselves. I watched the game on, of Syracuse about five times since Saturday, looking at everything. And our offense must do better at all positions. Our defense has played well, though not perfectly. Uh, our special team must be an asset to this team. We have spent the last 48 hours as a team identifying areas to improve in, self-evaluating what we do, how we do it, working hard and practicing with renewed purpose. I am confident that we will get it done. With all the words and coach, coaching cliche and, and assistance that we must do better won't help us play better. That comes in the form of coaching. It's why we coach. It is on me and our assistance to get this right, and we will. I believe in this team. On to Northern Illinois. Questions? Yes, sir. Well, like, uh, based on like, those comments, are there things that maybe you felt like the coaching staff didn't identify or maybe miscalculated some things in terms of either personnel or what you guys are capable of this time forward as a unit? Well, I know I just think we can all be better in what we're doing. I think as coaches, we got to evaluate every day how we're coaching and, and what message we're taking to our guys. And, and making sure we challenge our guys to, to question us if they don't know what to do, you know. And I think as a coach and as a teacher, you got to find ways to, to get to your players so they can do exactly what you you ask them to do. So um, I think as coaches, we got to be smart, make sure we're not over coaching, and, and making sure our guys are comprehending what we need them to do and understanding why we're doing certain things. Frustration. Um, everybody was upset. Uh, obviously, uh, everybody was embarrassed by the way we played, and, um, and they were hurt. You know, and I mean, that was it. it was hurt players in there. Hurt coaches. Hurt everybody. We're disappointed and frustrated at ourselves. Gene, coach, for the uh, the blocking, the protection, run blocking. Outside of players executing better, improving, is there some things you can do scheme-wise to maybe tie in a little bit for us? I think that's moving the quarterback and the tight end more. Are you doing things like that? Absolutely. Um, we can move the pocket. We can get uh, DeAndre out of the pocket more. Um, we can go different pass protection uh, to try to help out. We did within the game. We, we did some seven-man protection, uh, which is max protection for you. And, um, times it worked and times we, we, it didn't work. So. He's a heck of a football player. Um, he's, he's a young man that played with fanatical effort, which I think helped him um, be a great defensive end. He just he goes all out every single play, and um, it's going to be a challenge for him. We got to know where he's, excuse me, got to know where he's at every single play, and make sure we get guys on him. So he is he is a heck of a football player. Catherine, um, coach, in the past during the Fisher era, era they were able to occasionally move an offensive lineman to defend his tackle. Is there anyone very deep on the defensive end who could be your offensive tackle? Or is that um, something that's much um, Not necessarily right now that's going to come in and help us when 
ball game. We, we moved on Arthur Wilson over and um, he's playing for us now. You think a kid who played D-line for four years here and he just moved over in training camp and now he's, he's playing for us. So, um, you know, he's, he's doing the best job he can do right now and only getting better as he gets more reps in there. So uh, I don't see anybody else on the defense side of the ball that can actually just come over and help us right now and get done what we need to get done. So we got to go with the guys we have and we got to do a great job of developing them a lot quicker than, than we wanted to and, and make sure we put them in the best position for them to be successful. Let's go to Kevin in the back. Coach, you talked about reassessing how you practice. Is there anything in specific you want to try to do differently at practice going forward? Well, um, just going to make sure that we're, we're not necessarily running just any and every play, making sure we're going to run the plays that we're going to run in games and, and our guys understand everything they can get um, to that play from a defense standpoint so they can execute it a lot better on, on Saturday. You know, our guys got to uh, we got to have more consistent play and, and be better uh, when it comes to fundamentals and technique and you can be better when you understand what's going on and, and uh, what you're going to get uh, from the defense. Let's go to Kurt on front row. You mentioned the initial frustration in the locker room. I don't know how much you've been around the other coaches, players since. What's kind of the response been and what do you expect the response to be this week? Well, I tell you, um, and we had practice yesterday, and, and I didn't. I felt after um, Saturday game, it was going to be one of those um, sourpuss practices of guys coming around and pouting and all, and, and it was totally opposite. Our guys were, had uh, total focus, a lot of energy, and, um, and it started in the meetings. And again, what he said a lot to me. Um, our guys, they definitely want to get this corrected, and, and they're willing to do whatever it takes to, to get it corrected. But for them to come out with that mindset was a plus for me and something that I want our guys to be able to do and we had a really good uh, practice yesterday. Wait. Coach, you mentioned how you want special teams to be an asset against Virginia Tech. You had a block punt. Syracuse almost blocked three or four. Is it something with the formation or is it just players missing assignments? Well, uh, again, the one um, against Virginia Tech, it was just, uh, I guess you could call it a missed assignment. Player didn't block the guy right in front of him and um, he didn't block him. Special they did, we just didn't block on that one. And, um, and then in the Syracuse game, we got close there. We we didn't strain through our blocks. We got to strain through our blocks. And it's something we got to do, not just on special teams, but uh, offense and defense, strain a little more. And, um, and then we got to be better with our off time. Our off time got to be a lot better. And, and that always helps when you get the ball off quick. Go back to Iris. It sounds like you were maybe trying to get more feedback from the players about what they're experiencing or what questions they have, and if that's the case, did you, what kind of feedback did you get? Was, was uh, any information that was helpful? Uh, ask that question again, I'm sorry. It sounded like you were saying, that when you said the whole team needs to figure this out, it sounded like maybe, you were, did you ask the players for feedback on kind of what their questions are? Or what, what, no, what I, what I was saying is our players, when it comes to plays and things that we're running, is, is not sitting in meetings and just sit there and just Coach tell you something, you shake your head. But if you don't know, we want you to be able to tell us as coaches, hey, coach, I'm not sure what you said. I'm not, I'm not understanding that. Um, to not leave a meeting room, not understanding what you're doing, so that you go on the football field and you execute the way that we want you to. And I think sometimes that happens where guys don't want to raise their hand and say, coach, I'm not sure, and we got to make sure that. And sometimes as coaches, we just got to ask them, rather than relying on them, ask them what they know um, and how we're blocking certain things so they can. Um, tell us, and then a lot of times during that time, you find out what they know and what they don't know. And when we ask them to get them more involved in it. Coach, you guys haven't done maybe much points on the board um, since the start of the season. Can you just tell us what the offense needs to work on moving forward? Um, again, I think we all can be better as coaches um, and players start with us. we got to make sure we're um, putting our guys in the best position for them to be successful. Um, and, um, and then as players, they get execute the way they know they're capable of. I mean, when, you, when you watch the film, and, and the reason I'm not discouraged is because you see that well, there's so there's one guy here or a half second here, we get some things off. So when you watch it, it just goes back to we got to be better at putting our guys in position and then demanding that they do it the way that we want to. We got to become a, better, a more disciplined football team in every aspect, whether it's discipline in, in the techniques and fundamentals or discipline and not give selfish penalties that hurts the football team. We just got to be 
discipline overall before anything can take off and, and be what we need to be offensively. And then uh, probably the most important thing, we've got to be able to run the football. So we have to be able to do. And uh, that's never been the case, and, and that's something we have to do. And if we can run the football, and this offense becomes a lot better. Coach, again on the, the line blocking, I assume, are you getting a little bit more consistency in practice than you've seen in games? And if that's the case, why is it not translating onto the field? Well, I think a lot of times the guys are just panicking. The guys know what to do, and, and they're, they panic, and I think that happens when you get beat once or twice, and then you start to panic rather than trusting your, your technique and trusting your rules and assignments. And then you try to do too much, and I think that's what's happened. Our guys are trying too much rather than just block your assignments block your rules and what your rules are. The rules take care of everything for you. And that comes with confidence in, in what you're doing. And, and I think what we stand up is a lot of guys playing. Uh, some guys playing wasn't expected to play. And they just come with reps until they get comfortable and confident in what they're doing. And that's when it's going to be perfect for us. But as coaches, we got to make sure we uh, understand that those guys are, are new and haven't had a lot of experience, most of them. And, sure we put them in the best position so they don't they don't get bent out of shape right out there and, and they can be confident and com comfortable with their assignments and their and their rules. And real quick I know Jerry Kelly looked like he'd be helped out the game today. What's his status so um he'll be out this week. He won't play this week. game Saturday, you mentioned the idea of, of maybe slowing down the offense after reviewing the game. Do you think that's something that could help, and, and what could that do for you uh, if you decide to go that way? Well, I think uh, slowing it down, what it probably do, uh, not, I don't know, what it probably do is eliminate some of the pre-snap penalties that would that happen, uh, especially with some younger receivers that we have out there. Um, I think, if anything, it probably helped that. You know, uh, but that's what that's who we are you know, as offense. And we like to go with tempo, so we're not going to get away from it. We just got to be smarter and find different ways and practice and, and make sure our guys are lined up the right way. And then we can do it fast and, and communicate with the referees. And, uh, so the referees can tell them when they're on and off the ball. And, um, and then trusting the referee. You know, one play we had, our, our player told the ref he's off the ball and he was off, and then our player just threw it up. Back left. Really, when it comes to the running game, how much do you need a quarterback to run the ball? When it comes to this offense, how, how much does that help the running game when you have a quarterback that keeps him positive? Well, I think uh, in any offense, if you've got a quarterback that can run and get you some first down with his feet, uh, it always helps. And I think in the run game, you got a quarterback that can run, now you make the defense have to defend 11 guys in the run game instead of 10. So it helps you uh, tremendously from that standpoint. Uh, I don't think necessarily need the quarterback to be able to run the football, but it, it, it does help tremendously when he does run the football for you. And, uh, but again, we have some tremendous backs, and we got to get the ball to them. And, and, uh, and I think when you look at us, we, as an offense right now, we, we don't have an identity. You know, we got to establish an identity and, and what we're going to be and who we're going to be. And, and that's on me as, as a coach to help us uh, do that. For this offense, though, 2018 Florida State, do you think your quarterback needs to be more of a weapon in the running game? Uh, I think when we ask him to. I think uh, he's getting better at doing those things when we ask him to do it. In that game uh, on Saturday, we didn't ask him to do it as much. Um, and, and then as we got behind, we had to throw the ball a little more. And then, uh, I mean, times what he did, you know, he, he made some good reads. He scored on one, and the other one, he guard blocked uh, wrong backer, he blocked the right backer, he's, he's running now for however many yards. So um, I think he's getting better at our uh, quarterback reads, uh, quarterback runs that we ask him to do, and, uh, and it's going to help us as, as we continue to roll. Chris, up front. With Derek Kelly out, and I presume Landon Dickerson is still out, is there a potential that a freshman offensive lineman could play, or is that just not on the table at this point? Well, I think um, every, everything's on the, on the table right now. And, Make sure we find answers and, and making sure we find the right five guys in there to, to get us going. Um, but again, with, with, with a group that we don't have much depth at all from the beginning, uh, again, anything's possible right now. So uh, I just think 
some guys know how to develop a lot quicker than we thought they would. And uh, it's just that's where we're at it. And we've got to find the right guys. Let's get it done. I guess you kind of answered the question right there, but you're building something for the long term. Is it worth it at any point to, to maybe go away from things that don't align with your principles to get some short term results or to flip a bandage to survive this early part of the year? Well, I think you got to you know, you got to evaluate everything you're doing and, and making sure you, you're making changes that's that's right for, for where you're going as a program and what you're doing, and not just making rash decisions because it's things just aren't going your way. You got to do a great job of evaluating everything and why there aren't going the, the, the way that we need them to, and then correct the, I mean, correct the why, and why those things are, are happening for us. But we got to be smart, and, and more importantly, uh, play our guys' strengths and, and, and not their weaknesses. So I mean, that's on us as coaches to find what, what our guys do best and ask them to do that. And, and as we get going and get momentum and our guys get comfortable with what we're doing, then uh, we'll start seeing more improvement from our guys. Let's go back to Corey. We have two questions. Uh, first, DeAndre health wise, how is he? He got hit a lot. Yeah, he's hit. He's 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 good. So he's did, good. Did, did you realize? I mean, he, he took last time he played in 2016. He got hit a lot too. Yeah. How tough a hit is he? Very tough. Very tough. I mean, I'd rather run him and get hit than have him sit back there and get hit. At least he'll know it's coming. But uh, he's a tough kid. I mean, he sits there in, in the pocket and he try to wait for some guys come open and get the ball out. And, not many guys can do that. Not many guys have the heart to sit in there and do it. You know, sometimes I'll rather him run and sit there. And, and there's time where he he's got to hitch up in the pocket too and not sit back there because Thompson just drop and be a sitting duck. You know, so there's things from uh, quarterback technique things he can be a little better at too, hitching up to avoid some of those uh, hits that he gets. You know, but I I like to see him if he don't have it, take off and run a little more than, than what he's doing. And a couple times on Saturday, you had delay of games coming out of a kickoff or a change of possession. Is that a communication thing with you in the box or you and the players? What no, was going well, on there? That's more a communication thing, and then more. Um, I know the one you're talking about is that more the player just had a brain fart, you know, out there. Um, I mean, he knew it. We all said it, and he knew it. He came back. That's my bad, coach. You know, and trying to get him on the right side, he was on the wrong side, and. That game, we could have took a timeout. We felt we needed it. So, um, but that's that's all part of our guys being locked into what we're doing, and, and, and that's what we got to be a hell of a lot better at it, is understanding and being disciplined and, and what we need to do. You know, we can't have those penalties, those pre-snap penalties that can kill you before we even get started. You know, so um, we need to be a heck of a lot better on that. Let's go back, Kevin, at the back. Coach, sometimes when, when things aren't going your way, social media can be a toxic place. Uh, personally, how do you handle that? And, and do you as, as coaches maybe coach some of the players on, on how to handle that? Um, I handle it by not being on there. <coughs> it's pretty simple to me. And, and you understand when you don't play well, people are going to say negative things. You know, that's part of it. If we don't want them to say negative things, then we got to play better. Our players the same way we tell them the same thing that's that's part of it. that's the world we live in now everybody has an opinion you know and uh, you can't let everybody's opinion affect what you're doing but they're going to have negative or positive depending on how you play you know if we play bad they're going to say bad things and we can't get upset we should be upset with ourselves you know we want them to say good things about it and then we go play well and, and they will so uh, and our guys understand that they understand we got to take care of our business if that's what we want you know so we can't can't get frustrated at anyone for getting mad at us. You know, to me, they're, they're upset because they they know we can play better than what we're doing, and we're not playing the way we're supposed to. So they have every right to be upset, and we got to change that. And we can't we can't ask them to, to change the way they think or anything. We can we can earn their support and earn their respect by the way we play. All right. Anything else, coach? I noticed uh, towards the end of the game, I think on their last touchdown run, you were talking to John Fabius after the play. Um, kind of like, it looked like about technique things. Is it important that even as things are going poorly to, to focus on the details and not about that? Absolutely. You can't ever get away from it. So that, that little detail, that little detail I was telling them could have avoided that guy scoring on that play. And it was just more not running around the block. As soon as he ran around the block, the running back was placed where he was. And he 
just got to take on that block and force them that way as teammates. So I always think that no matter what spot on the board, every, every opportunity you get to um, teach and help these guys, you got to do it no matter what the situation is. And, uh, hopefully he take that and run with him. There might be a situation this week where uh, he do it right and it help us in the game. Coach, back to the injuries on the O-line, how is Dickerson's rehab going, and how is Minshew's health? Uh, Minshew's health is good, and uh, Dickerson is, is coming along uh, well with his rehab. You know, uh, I'm still not sure when he's exactly will be back, but he's coming along uh, really well. All right, anything else? Once again, I believe in this football team, and I believe they're going to get it right. We all going to get it right. Uh, hang in there with it. Go notes. <laughs>